Oxygen sensors, commonly referred to as O2 sensors, play a vital role in modern vehicles by monitoring the oxygen level in the exhaust gases to help the engine control module, ECM, adjust the air-fuel mixture for optimal combustion. This not only ensures efficient engine performance, but also helps in reducing harmful emissions. However, for various reasons, including performance tuning, bypassing emissions tests, or dealing with a malfunctioning sensor, some vehicle owners might consider tricking or bypassing these sensors. This article delves into five methods of tricking an O2 sensor, examines the implications of each method, and discusses whether bypassing an O2 sensor is ultimately beneficial. One of the most direct methods to trick an O2 sensor is by installing a dummy or simulator sensor. This device mimics the electrical characteristics of a working O2 sensor but doesn't actually measure anything. The dummy sensor sends a constant, preset signal to the ECM, convincing it that the exhaust system is functioning correctly. This can be particularly useful if the catalytic converter has been removed or is not working, as it prevents the check engine light from coming on due to the absence of correct sensor readings. To implement this method, one must physically remove the existing O2 sensor, which is usually located in a hard-to-reach area of the exhaust system and install the dummy sensor in its place. This requires some mechanical skill, not only to access the sensor, but also to handle the delicate wiring that connects it to the ECM. Care must be taken not to damage the wiring or the sensor's threads during this process, as incorrect installation can lead to further issues. However, this method comes with significant caveats. Legally, using a dummy O2 sensor can be considered tampering with emissions controls in many regions potentially leading to fines or vehicle registration problems during emissions tests. Performance-wise, although it might keep the check engine light off, the ECM won't receive accurate data about the exhaust, leading to potential issues with fuel efficiency and engine performance. Over time, running with an improperly tuned air-fuel mixture can harm the engine and increase emissions, negating the very purpose of having an O2 sensor in the first place. Using an O2 sensor extender or spacer is another approach to manipulate the data the sensor sends to the ECM. This method involves placing an additional piece of hardware between the exhaust pipe and the sensor, effectively changing where the sensor reads the exhaust gases. By altering this position, the sensor might detect less oxygen or a different mixture than it would if it were directly in the exhaust stream potentially fooling the ECM into thinking the exhaust system is more efficient than it is. Installation of an extender or spacer is typically less invasive than completely replacing the sensor, as you're merely adjusting the sensor's position rather than removing it. However, this method still requires access to the sensor, which might be challenging depending on the vehicle. The idea behind this approach is to slightly delay or alter the sensor's exposure to the exhaust gases, which can change the voltage signal sent to the ECM. Yet this method, like others, has its drawbacks. By changing the sensor's location, you risk sending misleading data to the ECM, which might adjust the fuel-air mixture incorrectly. This can lead to a condition known as running rich or lean, where the engine either burns too much fuel or not enough, respectively, impacting both performance and emissions. Moreover, while it might pass a visual inspection for emissions, it doesn't address any underlying issues with the exhaust system or emissions control, potentially leading to more significant problems down the line. The resistor bypass method involves adding a resistor to the O2 sensor signal wire. This resistor can create a voltage drop that mimics what a properly functioning sensor might send to the ECM, particularly for sensors located after the catalytic converter, which are meant to monitor its efficiency rather than the fuel-air mixture. By choosing the right resistor value, one can simulate a sensor output that suggests the catalytic converter is working fine, even if it's not. This method requires some electrical knowledge to determine the correct resistor value, usually around 0.45 volts for postcat sensors, and to connect it properly to the sensor's wiring. It's a relatively cheap and non-invasive method since no parts are being replaced. However, precision is key to avoid sending a signal that's too far from what's expected. The downside here is significant. The ECM is essentially fed a static signal that doesn't change with engine conditions. Over time, this can lead to the ECM not adjusting the fuel mixture correctly, 
resulting in poor performance, increased emissions, and potentially damaging engine components due to improper combustion. Also, newer vehicles with more advanced diagnostics might not be fooled by this simple trick, detecting the discrepancy between the input and actual engine performance. An RC circuit, consisting of a resistor and capacitor, can be used to smooth out the signal from an O2 sensor, making it appear more stable than it might be in reality. This method involves connecting both components to the sensor's wiring to create a circuit that charges and discharges, providing a less erratic signal to the ECM. This can be particularly useful when dealing with a sensor that fluctuates too much due to a fault but isn't recognized by the system as failing outright. Setting up an RC circuit is more complex than just adding a resistor, requiring knowledge of electronics to solder or connect the components correctly. The capacitor acts to smooth out voltage spikes or drops, potentially making the sensor's output look more like that of a healthy sensor over time. However, the major issue with this method lies in its inability to adapt to real-time engine conditions. Like the resistor method, it provides a false sense of normal operation but doesn't adjust dynamically with changing combustion conditions. This can result in the ECM making decisions based on inaccurate data, leading to suboptimal engine performance, higher emissions, and possibly engine wear. Additionally, the reliability and longevity of such a setup can be questionable, especially under varying driving conditions. Reprogramming or reflashing the ECM is the most sophisticated way to bypass or trick an O2 sensor. This method involves altering the ECM software to either ignore O2 sensor data or set a fixed fuel mixture that doesn't rely on sensor feedback. This approach is often part of a larger performance tuning effort, where enthusiasts aim to optimize their engine for power or efficiency beyond what the manufacturer intended. This method requires specialized tuning software and hardware, and typically, professional assistance or deep technical knowledge, as incorrectly modifying the ECM can lead to engine damage or failure. The software can adjust parameters so that the ECM doesn't throw a check engine light for sensor issues or can be set to run at a constant air fuel ratio, which might enhance performance in modified engines. However, this comes with significant risks and considerations. Legally, altering emissions control this way can be against the law in many areas, potentially leading to penalties or vehicle failure during emissions tests. From a performance perspective, while you might achieve desired power outputs or fuel efficiencies, running an engine outside of its design parameters can reduce its lifespan, increase emissions, and void warranties. Moreover, such modifications require ongoing maintenance and tuning to ensure the engine remains balanced and healthy. Bypassing or tricking an O2 sensor might seem appealing for short-term gains or to skirt around emissions checks, but the long-term implications need careful consideration. Legally, tampering with emissions controls is often against regulations, which can lead to fines, failed inspections, or more severe penalties. From an engine performance standpoint, while initial gains might be observed, the lack of accurate sensor feedback can lead to inefficient combustion, increased fuel consumption, and higher emissions over time. The potential damage to engine components from running with incorrect air fuel mixtures can be costly, not only in terms of repair, but in reduced engine longevity. The cost-benefit analysis often tips towards addressing the root cause, whether it's a faulty sensor or a need for performance tuning, through legitimate means. Properly diagnosing and fixing issues or opting for professional tuning that works within legal and sustainable frameworks might cost more upfront but save money, legal headaches, and environmental impact in the long run. For most vehicle owners, the wiser approach is to maintain or upgrade their vehicle systems without compromising the integrity of emissions control or engine health.